Hey, what's up everyone? This is Luke and welcome to Luke I'm on TV. Uh, today I thought I'd do a video talking about some of my paranormal experiences. Um, now when I decided to do this video, I was actually debating on what the title should be. Uh, at first I was thinking about calling it Ghost Experiences. Uh, then I thought about calling it Ghost Stories. Uh, but then eventually I realized, well, unless I know for sure that what happened was a ghost, then I probably shouldn't say that it was or imply that it was. So then I, I thought, well, maybe I'll just call it paranormal experiences because they are things that happen that were outside the norm and they're things that I really can't explain. But uh, what I'm going to do, so I decided what I'm going to do is I'll just, I'll tell you my stories and then you can just kind of decide for yourself what you think. So uh, the first story I'm going to tell you is uh, the first one that actually happened to me. Uh, I was 11 years old. Uh, it was actually kind of like the last day of fifth grade on uh, and um uh that year i had actually got to know this one kid uh, named daryl and uh he lived kind of in the neighborhood next to my neighborhood uh we we were classmates also he sat next to me the, like the whole year so we, we we got to know each other pretty well we became pretty good friends and everything and we joked around joked around a lot during class and everything like that and just became you know pretty close and uh, anyway, so like the last day of school, we're getting ready to leave and we're getting ready to get on the buses. And I said, hey, man, you know, you got to give me a call this summer. We got to hang out. You got to come over. We got to play basketball. And he's like, yeah, yeah, sure. Give me a call or just come over or whatever. Yeah, that's cool. Or I'll come see you. Yeah, all right. And I'm like, all right, cool, you know. And uh, so uh, so then later that day, um, I was out biking in my neighborhood with some friends of mine. We were just kind of biking around, just kind of doing our thing and stuff, having fun. It was now summer, you know. And, um, so anyway, all of a sudden we're hanging out and all of a sudden we started hearing all these emergency vehicles and we started hearing all the police and uh, what sounded like ambulance and stuff. And we're like, what is that? You know, what is all that? Is, there was a lot of it and it was getting louder and louder and like it was just everywhere all of a sudden. And all of a sudden, these other two kids come up on their bikes and they say, "Hey, Daryl just got hit by a car." And you're like, "We're like, what? You know, really? You know?" So he's like, "Yeah." So like, we followed him to where, he, uh, you know, where he saw or heard what had happened. And sure enough, that was where all the police and emergency vehicles were. Was uh, that it was what happened? Was Daryl had gotten hit by a car? And uh, I found out a couple days later what had actually happened was. Uh, a woman had blown through the stop sign and then hit Daryl as he was walking across the street. Uh, Daryl then flipped over the car and then landed on his head. Um, so uh, I, th I believe uh, Daryl was in intensive care for about two or three days after that. And then uh, I guess eventually the family decided to pull the plug. So uh, they, they let him go. And um, that was, uh, when I caught wind of that, that was extremely devastating to me. I, you know, I had, I had never lost anybody before. Um, and that includes relatives, you know, I had never lost any before. So it was extremely difficult for me to understand and tough to grasp, you know, and really struggle with it for a while. And uh, uh, thankfully, I, I was able to talk uh, a lot about it with my best friend, Dusty. We had been good friends since uh, kindergarten, so uh, we were able to talk a lot about it. And then we went to the funeral, and and that was terrible. You know, it was really tough to get through and deal with. And uh, so we we did all that. And then um, fast forward a, about a couple more months, we're now in like late July or early August. We're just kind of we were in my room. We're just kind of hanging out, just like uh, I think we were like playing with GI Joes or wrestling action figures or something like that. And uh, we had the TV on, but it was kind of in the background. You know, we weren't really watching it, and we weren't even really even talking. We we're just kind of hanging out, just that kind of thing. So uh, we're just kind of sitting there, and at, at this point, we had really not been talking much about Daryl anymore. Like, we had talked a lot about it at first, a bit at the beginning of the summer and after the funeral and everything. But then I think we just kind of decided to just stop talking about it so much and, to, and just try to enjoy our summer, you know. So um, anyway, so we're sitting there just not really talking, just kind of hanging out. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we, we hear this very loud, clear, distinct male voice come from the television. And it just says, Daryl W. 
Now, when it said that, it actually said his last name. And uh, I, I don't want to give you his last name because I, I just want to do that out of respect for the family. I just don't want to put his name out of there. So I'll just give you the initial. But it did it did say his last name. It said his full name. So what, yeah, so like what we heard, we're just sitting there and all of a sudden we hear Daryl W. And all of a sudden I just went into complete shock and I just kind of froze up. And... You know, I, like all the hair in the back of my neck and my arms stood up and I'm just sitting there. And then finally I said to my friend Dusty, I said, did you hear that? And he says, yeah, it said Daryl W. So we both just look at the TV like, you know, no way. You know, that's that's crazy. You know, and we both knew what we heard, you know. And we talked about it for a long time after that, just trying to figure it out. What happened? You know, did that really happen? You know, and uh now, fast forward again uh, to now, um, me and Dusty are now 16 years old. And uh, one night we're all driving around, you know, and I, I think we were at a friend's house or we're out at a party or something, and we we're kind of just driving home. And uh, finally I decide, you know, to ask him, you know, because it had kind of crossed my mind again. And I said, hey, man, you know, I'm going to ask you something, but, you know, you got to tell me the truth. And I'm like... Did you say it that day when when we heard Daryl W? Did you say that? He said, "No, no, I, I I thought you did," and I said, "No, I know that I didn't. So it had to have been you." Did you say it? No, no, I swear to God, I thought you did. I did not say it. I didn't say it. You know. So we was coming back and forth, and we're like, "So that really did happen then?" And 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 he's like, "Yeah, it must have." And I'm like, "Man, that is, that is crazy. Seriously, that is nuts." So. You know, and I trust my friend Dusty. You know, we again, we have been good friends since kindergarten, and he's not one to lie about something like that. So I believe that, you know, that he was telling the truth. And, you know, I, I knew pretty much what I what I heard anyway, and I think he knew exactly what he heard because he seemed to have heard the same thing. So, um, so that was my first paranormal story. Uh, the next one is uh, uh, that I'm going to give you is um, fast forward again. Uh, I am now 25 or 26 years old, and um, I had decided to go uh, to join a ghost hunting team. And uh, I, you know, through the years, I had just always been really interested in ghosts and ghost hunting, and uh, just always been really interested in that. I used to watch a lot of television show. Uh, there was a show called Sightings that I used to watch. And uh, my favorite part of that show was always the live ghost investigations that they did. And uh, I, was, I was just fascinated by that. I love that. So uh, eventually, uh, I just decided to uh, uh, look around for a ghost hunting team. I found uh, the Minnesota Ghost Hunter Society. Uh, and I contacted them, and then uh, they wrote back, and then we, uh, we hung out and talked. And eventually, they decided to take me on as a team member. And so we went on a few, uh, well, quite a few investigations, uh, but I was actually only with them for a, kind of a short period of time. Uh, I was actually only, only with their group, I would say about six months or so, but we did quite a few in uh, investigations. Uh, and anyway, uh, the, the first thing that happened to me was, um, you know, was I was at my, I was in my apartment and uh, I'm going to kind of paint a picture for you. So one morning I woke up and I was... I have like a couch, but it goes down into a bed. It kind of it, it's called a click clack. It's kind of similar to a futon. And uh, anyway, I was I was I have I have a couch that was in my room, and then next to my couch was a bookshelf, and then next to the bookshelf was the door. So the door is right here. So here's my couch. Here's the bookshelf, and then there's the door. All right. Okay. Now on my bookshelf, I also had like this robot bank. It was kind of like a talking robot bank, but it was also motion activated. So sometimes if you just like walk by it, it would uh, say these certain phrases. It would say like, you know, remember to save today or uh, you currently have blah, 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 blah amount of money or something. And and it, it's, its eyes would also light up and its hands would move back and forth sometimes. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was like a robot. So I would call it Simon, you know, kind of after the whole uh, Simon Says kind of thing. Uh, anyway, I always thought it was really cool. <laughs> so anyway, um, I woke up one morning and, uh, you know, if you've ever been woken up by having somebody wake you up by like kind of like, you know, get up, get up, you need to get up, you know, and then you're, you wake up like, what, 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 what do you want? What do you need? You know, if that's ever happened to you, then you'll kind of know what this is, what this is what it was like. Um, so I woke up one morning and it was just like that, but except I didn't feel anything. I didn't hear anything, but I just woke up. 
and it was like something had woken me up. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm like looking around, like, you know, what, you know, it was like something had woken me up. And so I'm just kind of lying there on my couch. And then finally I, I kind of just sit up. I'm sitting on the end of my couch and all of a sudden I felt this big cold rush of air just rush right past me. And uh, when I tell people this story, I always tell them that uh, if you can imagine what it would feel like if somebody were to get like a a, a, a hundred feet run, uh, head start or something, and then they if they were to run right past you, right in front of you, like what that would feel like, okay? Because that's pretty much my impression of what it would feel like. You just, this big cold rush of air just brush right past me, okay? That's exactly what happens. So I'm sitting there, I get this big cold rush of air. Now here's the thing, when it rushed past me, it also went through the door and and it went with the door th with uh with so much velocity that actually shook the door you know so it just boom, 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 it making like a vibrating noise against the door but here's the thing also it set off my robot bank okay so obviously something came through really quick and set it off and then shook the door so i mean i mean that was pretty intense and i don't have any explanation for that i mean i i did not have a window open um there was uh, like a heater vent but that thing isn't something that's gonna blow like a big cold rush of cold air you know i mean uh, you know I, I i don't remember exactly what time of the year this was if it was uh summer or winter i don't remember but most of the time i, I was like on the middle floor so a lot of times we didn't even have to even run like the heat you know, really, because it would be pretty warm and stuff. And if it was in the summer, it wouldn't even been on. And the and if it were and if it was warm outside, you know, there's no, there's no cold air that's coming from those vents, you know. So uh, I had no explanation for what happened, and and it happened so fast. And you know, when I tell people the story, that they always ask me like, "Well, weren't you scared? Did you get scared?" And I'm like, "Actually, no. Uh, those things don't really frighten me at all. I I, I actually take comfort in those things." Um, you know, I'm a big believer in the afterlife. So, uh, you know, when when I when those when I, when those things happen to me, or when I hear of things happening to other people, I just actually take comfort in that because it just gives me a kind of a confirmation that there is an afterlife. So, you know, if, if when that when those things happen to me, my personality is like, oh, cool, do that again. You know, do, you know, and I want to communicate. I want them to communicate with me because that's that's just my personality. You know cool, do it again. You know, that's my personality. So uh, anyway, so uh, that was my other story. Uh, I have one more story. It, it's not quite as good as that one, but it's it, it's kind of similar. Um, now, first of all, uh, a lot of people, they believe that w if you go on investigation sometimes, that things can attach themselves to you and they can follow you home. Um, I do believe that in that as well. And uh, I don't know exactly what investigation it was prior to this happening, but uh, anyway, uh, it's kind of a similar situation. Um, but you, but I just, I'm just going to tell you ahead of time that when I, when I would, when I would go on investigations and when I would leave investigations, um, I also, I used to wear like this uh, necklace and it had a cross on it. And uh, every time I would leave an investigation, I always kind of just grab my necklace and say, okay, you know, if there, if there's somebody here with me right now you need to stay here you need to stay behind you are not allowed to come with me you need to stay here you are not allowed to come with me and i would always say that but the thing is i don't think that that actually worked you know it's just something that i did and i, I wanted to believe that it worked but uh in this case i don't think that it did <laughs> but uh anyway so what happened was i was in my apartment uh, one night and i'm just kind of standing in my kitchen and all of a sudden, I started hearing this knocking coming from the bedroom. And, um, you know, I mean, I, I live in an apartment. I, I lived in an apartment building. I still live in, in, in an apartment building. This is, a, uh, this is a newer apartment building that I live in now. It's not the same one I lived in back then. But uh, anyway, I lived in an apartment building. So, you know, they can be noisy. But the thing is, you know, I, I actually lived on the top floor in that apartment. And uh, I only actually had two neighbors. So I had um, I had one neighbor that was next to my living room and then I had one neighbor downstairs so I kind of lived in the end unit where uh, my next to my bedroom there was no buddy and then there was nobody up above so it was just one person over here and one down below so anyway so I'm standing in my kitchen I hear that knocking coming from like my my uh, my bedroom like on the wall 
And it actually sounded like it actually could have been coming from the other side of the wall. And uh, so I'm like, what the heck? You know, so it takes me by surprise. So I go into the bedroom and I look and just nothing, you know, and I'm not hearing anything. I'm kind of standing there for a while. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, I was weird, you know. So then all of a sudden I'm standing there and all of a sudden I hear that knocking again, but it's coming back from the kitchen. So uh, once again, I go back into the kitchen and again, nothing, you know, I'm not really feeling anything. I'm not sensing anything, but at this point um, I'm a little leery of what's going on. I'm like, okay, this is kind of strange. I'm, I'm starting to hear knocking noises. And so I'm just standing there again. And once again, I hear that knocking coming from my bedroom uh, wall. So then I go into the bedroom again. And again, nothing. But now, now I'm starting to get a feeling that something could be going on. I'm starting to get a little sense of uh, a little bit of sense of urgency, or that something might is about to happen. Like that kind of be prepared, something might happen kind of feeling. Uh, if you've ever been in the presence of spirits, you might have, uh, you might know exactly what I'm talking about. So uh, I'm just standing there again, but now again I hear a knocking again, and but this time now it's coming from my living room. I'm like unbelievable this is crazy so now I go in the living room and now I'm just really starting to get that sense that something is there I'm just starting to get a sense that I mean it could have been just my mind but I'm just I'm getting a, a sense that something is playing games with me something's here and it's just messing with me so uh you know I, but I just so the night went on I just kind of you know it's kind of um played it off you know and uh so then I went to sleep that night woke up the next morning and I'm getting ready for work and everything, and and uh, pretty pretty much right away, I'm starting to get that feeling that something's in my apartment. I'm starting to get, I'm really starting to get that feeling that something is there. I'm just starting to feel like a little bit of a, a heaviness in my apartment. I'm starting to uh, look over my shoulder. I'm starting to get a little bit of a feeling like I'm being watched, uh, you know, a little bit. I'm really starting to get that feeling. So I'm like, okay, but nothing was happening. So I'm like, okay. So I go to work that night, and then I come back. And when I come back that night, as soon as I walked into my apartment, right away, I'm getting, now I'm getting that feeling again. Like as soon as I walked in my apartment, I'm like, yeah, you know, something is, is definitely strange right now. You know, I'm, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't claim to be sensitive and I'm not a medium at all, but I do feel that, um, a lot of times I can walk into a store or a restaurant or a hotel or an apartment building or whatever. And, uh, I can get a, a either a, a really good vibe or a bad vibe, you know, and, um, uh, I've, I've always been that way. I just, I can get a, I get a good vibe from a place where I get a bad vibe. And uh, in this case, I started to get kind of a bad vibe. I'm like, okay, something's up. You know, I'm just, something just doesn't feel right. Everything feels off. And again, there's a little bit of a heavy sense going on. But again, I'm just, nothing's happening at this point. There is no more knocking. So I'm not thinking anything about it. Okay. So now the next morning comes. But what happens is uh, I'm awakened at 5.30 in the morning um, by my stereo going on. Uh, it turned itself on. And uh, it, I mean, it, it took me by total surprise because, you know, I actually, I sleep in the living room. Um, I've always kind of done that. I, I still sleep in the living room and I was still sleeping. I was living, I was sleeping in the living room then. And so it took me by surprise, woke me up like 5.30 in the morning. Now, this actually made me really angry because I actually work nights in my job. And sometimes I don't actually get home till like 1 or 2. Or, and sometimes I don't get to sleep until 4 or 5 even sometimes. So, you know, sometimes I'm up really late. And then I, I usually set my alarm for like uh, 10, 11, or 12, you know. So this thing woke me up really early. And I, I, I was tired and I was angry. So my uh, after after the initial shock of what happened, I, then I get started to get kind of angry and a little aggravated. But eventually, I I went to sleep. It, you know, it took me a little while to get to sleep, but I eventually I went back to sleep. But I'm just like, come on, man, give me a break. You know, that's all I'm thinking. I <laughs> and then so anyway, so I I, I wake up again later. I, I get ready. To, I go to work, and uh, everything's fine. And then I come back from work that night. And as soon as I walk in the door, I get a, a really heavy sense again. But this time it's like more uh, prevalent. It's, it's more like I can really feel it this time, like immediate sense of urgency, like the immediate sense that something is watching me, something's there. I get that creepy kind of feeling. And at this point now I'm just mad because of the kind of, you know, it woke me up early in the morning. It had been kind of a long day at work. Um, and now I'm just mad. And then I, I finally decided to just, be straightforward. I say, look, 
I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're doing here, but you need to leave. And uh, I know it's kind of cliche-ish and some people say, you know, it, it, they think it's silly. They don't believe in it. But I then told her, I said, you know what? I said, you need to look for the light. You need to go towards it and you need to leave because you are not welcome here. And uh, I'm actually a big believer in that. I, I believe that if something is attached to you or bothering you or uh, in your in your place of residence and you, you don't want it to be, then you sometimes you just need to be straightforward and just say, look, I, I don't know who you are or what you're doing here, but you are not welcome and you need to leave. And that's uh, that's exactly what I did. And uh, it, it didn't happen right away. It didn't happen an hour later or two hours later. But the next morning when I woke up, it was much, much lighter feeling in my apartment. And uh, after that, nothing happened again. It, that was the end of it. So uh, was it paranormal? Uh, I, I, I want to believe so, but I can't say it for sure. But uh, I, I, I'm, I'm leaning more towards, yeah, something was off and something was definitely strange about that situation. So uh, anyway, uh, so this has been my video for paranormal experiences. Uh, if you enjoy what you watch, please make sure to like, comment, or subscribe. And I'll see you next time.